Hello there, welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk and my review for Psycho 2. Uh, I have reviewed the original Psycho on my channel already. Obviously that was part of my Hitchcock season, um, which I will hopefully be continuing at some point. Uh, but I've also just done a video over on my other channel, The Movie Evangelist, about Psycho 2, about the themes in it and whatnot. Um, and I loved this film so much, in fact, that I just wanted to do a regular review and I think because of the strength of this film I will be reviewing the other films in the franchise as well which I've just ordered from America because funnily enough can't seem to be able to get them over here uh, but yeah I've pretty much given the game away straight off the bat I love this movie I thought it was fantastic so it's written by Tom Holland, who quite frankly I think is one of the unsung heroes of horror. He, you know, big fans of horror do tend to sing his praises a bit, but I think the guy's name deserves to be higher up in the echelons when you're talking, you know, people who've done a service to horror. Uh, you think Fright Night, uh, which he wrote and directed, you think the, the first Child's Play movie which he directed and also had a hand in the script. For, and then this, Psycho 2, uh, which for me is probably his, his biggest achievement. Um, primarily because of the size of the shoes that he's having to fill here, you know? Psycho is, it's one of those, when, when you're talking about movies, it's like a golden calf, isn't it? It's, it's, it's just, it's, it's something that is beloved by so many people so many people and to do a sequel 20 years 22 years after the fact when it, you know when it, when it has such classic status like a remake is one thing but yeah doing a direct sequel to Hitchcock's classic so far after the after the fact they could have just fell on their asses basically big time and they don't you know uh, so Richard Franklin is in the director's seat but yeah that the script by Tom Holland I think is is really where most of the strength for this film lies um, and I think it's probably the script that brought back uh, Anthony Perkins as Norm, Norman Bates as well as Vera Miles as uh, Marion Crane's sister Lila. The film really deals with this idea of the way that bitterness over things from the past can really chew us up to the, to, to the point where we become very destructive forces to, to everything around us. And we see that embodied in the character of Lila, the way she, she can't let things lie, she has to mess with Norman's life in order to, to, to seek vengeance, really, that's what she's after. She would call it justice, but it is, it's vengeance. And, and it, it just makes everything come falling down around her. Uh, so yeah, that, that's kind of, I went into that a lot more in depth in my movie evangelist video, so do check that out. But as for everything else in this, this, this is a film that was coming like really off the back of the success of slasher movies um, that were kind of kick-started by Halloween, you know, and then in a big way Friday the 13th, that's what, when it really kicked into gear. Um, and if, if there's one criticism I'd have of this, it is that you do see that need by the filmmakers or that desire to kind of fit in with the Friday the 13th crowd and, you know, and, and the like. Um, there's a one kill sequence in here with, with this couple of teenagers that go into Norman Bates's basement where that does feel a bit Friday the 13th esque. It doesn't destroy the film in, in any way and it, and it is worked into the film in, in a way that feels natural enough but you do sit there thinking that's definitely the influence of other franchises at the time but hey ho you know you get with the times uh, but beyond that everything else in this film works so so well central relationship between Norman Bates and uh, Lila's daughter played by Meg Tilly is really really great it's, it's, it's a complex relationship because on, on the one hand she's part of this uh, plan to kind of bring Norman down uh, to essentially get him reincarcerated, but over the course of the film, as she draws closer to him and starts to regret some of the decisions she, she's making, um, it, yeah, you, you sympathise both with her for the predicament that she's now in, and for Norman, who 
for all intents and purposes, had his sanity at the start of this film. And because of the meddling of these two people, has been brought back down again. Um, it's it's a tragic story. Uh, you know, this, this, the whole character of Norman Bates is a tragedy, really. And I think that's what makes him work. You know, you can't sympathise with the likes of Michael Myers. You can't sympathise with the likes of Freddy. Maybe a little bit with Jason. Um, but here with Norman, you do see this, this desire within him to get right, to put himself right, to, to live a normal life. Um, and, and even when that, that's on the table, uh, yeah, something comes along to try and snap him back into insanity. I really liked Meg Tilly in this movie. I think I thought she was well cast. Um, I don't know that I've seen her in much of anything else. Uh, I know she has, she has done quite a bit of work, but yeah, uh, I really liked her here. Just a, a very warm presence. Um, like I say, it's, it's all in the casting because this is a character you could really hate, but the way she plays it, and again, that script by Tom Holland really draws you into her character, makes you sympathize with her. Even annoying characters like Warren Tooney, played by Dennis Franz, he's this like sleazy manager who kind of took over the Bates Motel, took over the running of it while, while Bates was incarcerated. Um, he, he, yeah, he's just a sleazy guy, but he has a reason. You know, as sleazy as he is, as, as annoying as he is, um, you get why he would have a grudge against Norman, because Norman comes, finds out what he's, you know, what he's done with the place, and just fires him outright. Um, which, you know, deservedly so, I'd do the same thing, but you understand the motivation of why this guy just then suddenly holds a grudge to, the, to this wacko who's suddenly back out on the streets giving orders, giving him his marching orders. Um, so yeah, like even like I say, even annoying characters like that have a purpose, have a, a, a motivation that feels valid, that feels real and justified in, in their view of the world. Again, down to the writing. There's a lot of shots in this that feel very much like Hitchcock and I know that when uh, Franklin and Holland were kind of teamed up together on this to, to go about making this film, they sat down with each other and they watched every Hitchcock film they could get their hands on. Uh, and they literally just had screenings of, of, of all of Hitchcock's films and they would take notes and look at what they could utilize, what they could put into Psycho 2. And you see that in the way that Franklin directs the film. Uh, many shots here that feel very reminiscent of the original Psycho. But the whole film, because it is centered on this incredible script, a very character-driven piece, it it works. It doesn't feel like it, it well, it doesn't feel like Gus Van Sant's Psycho, you know, which was just a, a scene for scene retread. You know, it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like one of them films where someone comes along and they just spend half their time aping what the original did or homaging and things like that you know uh, it, it's it's not a criticism you can hold against it there are times when those homages are there but they're used for good reason uh, so yeah incredible incredible sequel this might be my favorite horror sequel that I've seen to be honest uh, I, I saw this way back when I was a teenager um, coming off the back of the, the, the first Psycho film and I think back then I, was, I had my head up my bum really and, and I think I, was just, I dismissed this like even before I watched it I was like no there's, there's no way there's no way it can be as good as Hitchcock's Psycho and it's just like I think I hurt myself I shot myself in the foot by doing that because revisiting it all these years after with no expectations just those memories of it not really coming close to what Hitchcock had done I like I said I sat down no expectations and I enjoyed every minute of this every minute of it uh, just all the twists all the turns all the characters um, and even the villains in the piece you know uh, Lila's character she, she kind of becomes the villain you know she wasn't in the original film but she is here in a way but a very justified villain a very sympathetic villain you know when you think about what she lost what she had to, to go through in the first film you get it you know she's She's not without purpose. This hasn't come out of out of nowhere. So, again, that's just that creating characters, writing characters that are fully fleshed, fully farmed, and have 
motivations that, that feel very real uh, really goes into making this one of the best horror sequels that I've ever seen and I give it a four and a half out of five. If you've seen Psycho 2, I want to know what you thought about it. So please do comment below and let me know your thoughts. And while you're at it, do go over to the Movie Evangelist channel and check out that video that I did. If you want to hear a few more of my thoughts, in-depth thoughts, on really the meanings behind this film. So yeah, thank you for watching and until next time, cracking.